What's up, guys? Teddy Cornwell here. Welcome to the Underdog Talk. Something about the Underdog. I mean, today we had the mind behind, behind Cellflow 6 and Vaso 6, and I gotta say it, an absolute beast on this show. <laughs> but you guys know, before we get into this interview, I have to give this man a proper Underdog Talk introduction. Today's guest is the owner of the popular ingredient, Vaso 6, commonly found in pre-workout and pump supplements today. Today's guest is also the mind behind Cell Flow 6, which is an all-natural, high-performance green tea extract. A man who once took a bullet to his chest to protect his friend. A star high school football player. And a man who once said, this isn't a beard. It's a winter coat. I'm <laughs> proud and honored to present the legendary, the man himself, the one and only Mr. Matthew Nickerson. What is up, sir? How you doing today? I'm doing fantastic, brother. I got to tell you, dude, you're about to be my, my hype man anytime, anywhere I go somewhere, you're coming with me. You, you know, got my head swell up over here, brother. Top of the morning to you, dude. Hey, top of the morning to you. Now, Matt, before we start this interview, I have to give props to the beard, man, because it looks so badass. <laughs> and then with the tats, bro, I do not want to mess with you, sir. I mean, how long have you been growing that beard out? So, dude, it's the beard actually has an origin story to it, dude, believe it or not. And it's kind of a funny one. So I'm uh, I'm sitting in front of my gym on the phone with my business partner in January 2020. And across the parking lot, literally beelines towards me from about 100 yards away comes Keith Jardine. And, uh, you know, he's, a, he's an actor, former MMA. He's an Albuquerque guy, which is where I'm from. And he's like, uh, hey, brother. He's like, I've got a project that I'm working on, man. I think you'd be a great fit for it. Um, I'm looking to put some, uh, some investments together and put the backing to it. And I'd like to keep it local. He's like, I wrote a script. Uh, it's going to be starring uh, him, you know, Keith. He's like, it's going to be starring me and Cowboy Cerrone. And he's like, right now I'm looking for investors. I'm like, I, I said, I like it. I said, I'd like to read it. Uh, and if it makes sense, I said, yeah, I can put it in front of the right people. And if I like it personally, I said, yeah, I'll put some, some momentum behind it. Uh, I just want to be in it. And I want to be killed by you. And he's like, man, done deal, dude. So I, I read a script, we go through it, and I was either going to be part of the train robbers that ends up getting shot in the face by Keith, or I was going to be part of the posse in pursuit of Keith, where he and I have a shootout in the middle of the street. And so I grow this nasty, ugly beard, and uh, it was for that role, which was early 2020. Then COVID happens. And the project, in essence, kind of got scrapped, and he ended up selling the script to Lionsgate. And so we never made the movie out here. He did fine, and uh, and I, I just kept it ever since. But this was for the character that I was going to go get shot in the face in a Western. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, it, it looks badass, so I'm really glad you kept it, Matt. I yeah, really yeah, it's just part of it, dude. Before, I used to have hair all the way down to my chest, dude, and I did that when I started, uh, when I actually started the development of Vaso 6, uh, I told my, my girlfriend at the time, look, I either buzz my hair off or I grow it out. And I'm not, I'm not going to change that until I actually do a deal wow. and get this thing off the ground and, and make it become what it becomes. So my motivation, I felt it was a higher degree of accountability and discomfort was growing out this long, long hair. And never cutting it again until I actually brought my product to market and started uh, changing people's lives for the better relative to their health and wellness. And when I finally got a deal done with Compound Solutions, I kind of let it go for a while because I still enjoyed it and kind of became my look. Uh, it was a distinguisher in the market. I, I enjoyed the long hair and the beard thing. However, it also caught that ridiculous wave of, you know, man bun and everything else. And so I was like, man, it's time to change it up. So I I enjoyed it, got rid of it. It served its purpose. It held me accountable every day to work hard. And uh, and away we went. Damn right. I love <laughs> it. I love it. Now, Matt, I want to take it way back and get into this interview. Okay. 
you know, so following a high school football game, you were gunned down at point blank range while protecting a friend. You were left bleeding and unconscious in the street. Thank the Lord, you know, you survived the shooting, but the injuries you, you know, you got ended your final high school football season. So now, Matt, I think the big question is, would you mind talking a little more about this? And then how did this change your life? I, you know, I'm happy to, Matt. It's a good question. A lot of people usually want to know about it because it's just such a weird thing. Yeah. Uh, it was my high school uh, homecoming game, and it was a good game. We we were playing Gallup, and not that that team matters to anybody. I'm just recalling the details as I recall them. And Gallup, they weren't that great of a team, man. So I, I, I knew I was going to be able to beat up on them a little bit. I was really excited about bringing a win home to my home crowd uh, on our homecoming night. I opened up the game with a 74-yard touchdown run, uh, took off. It was great. felt good. And we're flying high, dude. After the game, you know, my, my dad tells me, he's like, son, you're on top of the world. He's like, I've never seen anyone with such a meteoric rise. And he's like, don't do anything to mess it up, man. Don't turn a high, high into a low, low. And I said, copy that. I said, I'm, I'm good to go. I'm going to go to the dance. And we're going to have a little barbecue and swim party at my friend's house. And that's a wrap. And on our way... I jumped in a car with my buddy, my date, and two of our other friends. So there's a total of five people in the car. And uh, the driver of my car was getting into a conflict with the driver of another car. It's not uncommon in Albuquerque. Shit, I think we lead the country in carjackings, dude. So, I mean, road rage and conflict on the road is a pretty common thing out here. Not that I encourage it, of course. And I've actually never been a part of a conflict like this before or since. And so... These guys are kind of getting into it verbally. They end up pulling over. The driver of my car gets out and uh, he goes over and they're, they're exchanging words a little bit. And he kind of stopped dead in his tracks. And uh, <laughs> it's terrible to say, it, but I, I kind of chuckled. And I'm like, you know, he's getting out talking all this tough guy shit. And then he <laughs> it's go time. And he decides he changes his mind. But then I realized he's got this little red dot dancing around on his chest and settling on his forehead. And I saw the dude. Level a level a gun, laser pointed pistol at him, and uh, so that's when I get out, and uh, I start approaching the car cautiously. I make sure the driver can see me, dude. His eyes were dilated like the size of olives, and uh, and he was just he was flying high on things, and so I went over and I said, "Look, man, if you're looking for a fight, we can we can have one. Uh, if you're looking to have a gunfight, you win by forfeit." It's, it's not that serious. I, I diffused the situation. That was the entire goal. And I was diffusing it. And then his sister started popping off in the back seat because she felt very empowered by her brother putting guns in a couple of guys' faces. And she reignited the situation. She, in fact, fl- flamed it to the boiling point that it reached. And as I said, he was in a different state of mind. And I saw his eyes. I was watching his, his mannerisms. Uh, Side side note: I grew up as a fighter. I've been in I've been in more fights than I can count, so I'm pretty uh, in tune with body language. And yeah. I always comment: I'm like, it's so weird to me that people never know when they're in danger. Like all the signs were there. This person was coming, and you just never took note. And so I saw this guy just really starting to get into that weird fidgety, panicky, yeah. and and so I knew it was coming. So I got in front of my buddy, and I put my hand out. Uh, trying to shield them, trying to tell them, like, don't do it. Uh, and it was all this close. I mean, it was literally point blank. And uh, he he fired one off, and it happened so quickly, I, I instinctively grabbed the gun, and I shot his ass back with it. And so he took one, and I didn't kill him, and obviously he didn't kill me, but as far as my first gunfight goes, the fact that we tied, I was pretty happy with. So didn't win, didn't lose, but uh, he... He took off and drove away. He went straight to the hospital to treat his wound. Uh, I actually went after the car. I made it a few steps. My knees got a little wobbly, and I couldn't understand why. And then I couldn't lift up my shoulder because I was kind of still in the fight mode where I need to get my hands ready for what's going to come next. Is he going to loop back around, and what's that going to look like if he does? And then I, I started touching my chest, and I had just a handful of blood. And so I started getting a little woozy. The guy that who I saved, uh, he's behind me. He's catching me because apparently I was falling back. I was falling backwards. 
and the bullet struck me right underneath my left chest, right, or my left pec, right underneath. Came in, bounced off a bunch of ribs, laid in the lining of my lung, and just sat there so it didn't exit. And thank goodness, if the guy turned my back into a cereal bowl, I wouldn't be here talking shit about it right now. But he, uh, he takes me down with one shot. I'm in the street, and it's like the cliche, dude. I'm, I'm in the cold, rainy street in the middle of the night. And one of the, one of the weird parts that I don't actually talk about a lot because people act like I'm crazy, and I'm not, dude, all right? Like, <laughs> but this woman was out walking her dog. She's an ER nurse, and she came over and rendered medical aid uh until the emts arrived and so what she had done was instead of using something that's absorbent like a shirt or anything else for compression to to slow or stop the bleeding it wasn't going to stop it but she used a, a credit card she put plastic down because it's not absorbent she pressed into the wound and uh, we're kind of keeping me alive as long as we can until the emts arrive and then poof she was gone no one no one saw her leave. Like it just in the cab, she was gone. And it sounds like I'm making this fictional guardian angel up, but I mean, she was there, she helped and then she was out. And so that was kind of the weird part of the story, but somewhere along the lines, <laughs> somewhere along the lines, I was lying on the ground and, and my friends had spilled out of the car at this point. They're running over because they think I'm about to die. Uh, and I understand why, what they saw had to be scary. It was a point blank thing. It was a bang, bang shooting i'm on the ground and i'm bleeding out so i'm sure that they they probably felt that there was you know the end uh, but i knew it wasn't i could tell i wasn't going to die from it and i don't know why because i was in and out of consciousness or kind of fading in and out and i was getting really loopy um and my dear friend michelle carter who i'd known since we were five when i first found her catcher's mitt at a baseball little league stadium uh and i returned it to her and we ended up going to elementary school, middle school, high school, the whole thing. So she's been one of my best friends my entire life. And she's just crying her eyes out. And I'm, I'm in her lap. And we're having these final moments. And uh, the EMTs are arriving. And they're like, okay, okay, what's his name? What are you, what's your name, sir? And I was like, uh, I'm Superman. And I winked at her. And they're like, oh, my God, he's, he's, he's lost too much blood. He's, he's fading out. And I said, relax. I said, my name's Matt. I'm just trying to keep my friend calm who's in more worse shape than I am at the moment, dude. Like she was going into some cardiac arrest legitimately. Like she was hyperventilating in the back of the ambulance along with another one of my friends that I was with. Like they were, they needed medical care because they were just, they were losing it, dude. And so I was trying to just make them laugh a little bit, make them know like, look, I'm not going anywhere. This sucks and it hurts, but I'll be fine. Um, and so that was my last high school game. And it was, it was unfortunate. Uh, it's not how I wanted things to go out. And as I'm on the gurney and I'm being wheeled through the, the emergency room, uh, it was inoperable at the time. The bullet was so deep in my lung and embedded in there that they couldn't actually go out and get it. So I had to live with this bullet in my back for about three and a half, four months. And the analogy is like a splinter. It's just got to work its way to the surface. And I actually had one fight at Michelle's front yard, by the way. Uh, this guy was always like, you're not as tough as you think you are. I know I could take you. And I'm like, Look, I, I've kind of got a rule, dude. Like, the answer is yes. If you think you can beat me, you don't get to tell me about it. You're going to have to show me. And, uh, and I said, we don't have to speculate at all, dude. If you really do think that you can take me, we can go figure it out. And I, I, I carry a mouthpiece in my front pocket at all times. Like, if somebody wants to go, I'm going to pop it in. We're going to go. And, uh, and so we go in the front yard. I pop my mouthpiece in. And we have at it, and I've got this bullet in my back, and I remember he tagged it once pretty good. And this is, I know, it's irresponsible. I don't, I'm in, dude, I'm 18, you know, I'm a dumbass kid. And uh, we have a fight in the front yard, and I gave him a proper beatdown, and it was fun. And we, we were better friends after the fact. Uh, but I remember thinking, you know, that was probably pretty stupid. But it also made me think, I can, I can play football again, man. Like, I had some good mobility. I liked the way I moved. Everything wasn't in terrible pain. And so I kept training and working it out uh, to see if I've got a little bit left. Uh, but that was kind of the, the first indicator that, man, maybe I don't go military right away. And that was my plan after high school. Like, wow. I, I couldn't stand my high school football coach so much that every plan that I had to want to go and play college was kind of out the window. I was like, I'm just going to the military I'd rather serve my country than play for another guy like this. The guy's ruined the game for me. 
But after the game was taken from me, I had no closure and it became this insatiable unfinished business situation. And I, I had lost all my opportunities, all my scholarships, all the schools ever recruiting me, uh, University of Arizona, UNM, WVU, which wow. was my, my highest interest, uh, UNLV. Uh, and honestly, I think those were the ones that were the most serious. Yeah. And uh, they all disappeared. And then I ended up going and playing football at Western New Mexico. But I digress. Uh, <laughs> had to fight with this guy. And, and at the end of the day, it just made me realize that I've got some fight left in me. I want to play the game again. I want, I want to walk away from it the right way under my terms. And then perhaps after I get a degree, I can see what's there for me relative to serving my country, military, and, and things of that nature. But um, it was a weird story, dude. Like, I I had to avoid the media. I had, I'd like, literally, my administration in my high school was calling me saying, stay home. Uh, there's there's way too much media here. We have, we have news vans literally surrounding the school. Um, they were in front of my house. They were trying to capture pictures of me. And, in fact, there's an infamous picture of me. Um, at my practice and my coach, like the, the context matters, dude. <laughs> like uh, there was a picture of me with a kind of a smile on my face and I'm lifting up my shirt. And uh, my coach, who was awesome, uh, different coach. Yeah. He's like, uh, all right, let's see the, let's see the bullet hole pussy boy. And it, it made me laugh. And so like awkwardly kid, I'm like, he, he, he. And I like, you know, I'm showing him my shot, and that's where the guy captured the picture. And and everyone that saw it, the, the news article of like, oh my God, look how happy and gleeful he is, and he loves that this happened. He loves the attention. And I was like, God, man, people are just so gross, dude. Like, I just lost everything. All right, like I've been training to be a college quarterback since I was a little kid, dude. Yeah. And uh, and it was gone. It was absolutely gone. And uh. There were those that they're like, well, you're not playing anymore. You don't have to go to practice. And I'm like, I'm like, I lost my identity, dude. And uh, wow. <laughs> it was just the worst time in my life, man. And it was terrible. But the fact that people were out there kind of ringing the bell, like I was enjoying it, it was grotesque. And so from that point on, I adapted the philosophy of, and bear in mind, this isn't my quote, but it's one I subscribe to, is silence can be... Uh, misinterpreted but never misquoted yeah and uh and so i just tuned out the media altogether no more no no interviews i didn't grant any interviews i didn't i just wanted the story to die i didn't want the attention yeah. and uh yeah. and finally it did on to the next but that 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 really set me onto a different path of uh it made me realize life is much more fragile and some of the some of the goals that I had needed to be refined. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I didn't want to just live today. I wanted to build for tomorrow. And uh, 18 was just too young. And again, I had a guy ask me the same story. He's like, well, did, did you, did you learn? And I said, dude, what did I have to learn? I was a 17 year old kid playing football. Like, are you, like this isn't an after school special. I wasn't a bad guy on a bad no. path that deserved to get shot. I, I, I saved my friend's life, dude. And that's yeah. not even, that's not hyperbolic. I legitimately did. I was in a gunfight. And the fact that this guy acted like this was going to set me on a better path annoyed me. I was like, I was on a good path, dude. What better path could I have possibly been on? I was with my friends at home coming at a dance, going to a, a party. Who and who didn't do that in high school? But I'm the bad guy that should be vilified as if I hadn't lost enough. Now, now you know, so that was. Wow. Uh, that's a lot of talking, dude, and you're a wonderful listener, so forgive me for rambling. No, I, I was listening to every word that you were you saying, were. Matt, and I mean, first of all, I'm just so glad that you, you know, you're okay, and I think people who vilif vilified you, like you said, are, they have something wrong with them. I mean, you were a kid in the wrong place. I mean, things happen. You can't control what happens. It happened. You know, yep. you didn't do anything wrong. Now, I do believe, Matt, that good things come out of the hardest times in our life. And as Amen. you mentioned, you know, this incident, you know, again, nothing, it, it, it was life, it happened, but it yeah. did teach you how fragile life was, you know, as you mentioned. And then it motivated you to live a life of purpose, you know, and then 
this is where it all ties in. This is why I really wanted to talk about this before we talk about, obviously, your newest ventures. But this is what led your journey in the field of health and wellness. You know, through this, the brand Vaso 6 came to play. Would you mind talking about what Vaso 6 is, Matt? And then how did the idea of Vaso 6 come to be? Happy to, dude. And so, as you said, again, great segue. I, I, I was an athlete. I pride myself on being an athlete. Yep. Uh, I went to college, got my degrees, uh, criminal justice and sociology, dude. I, just, I wanted to go be, I want to be a cop. All I yeah. wanted to do was law enforcement and live a life of service, dude, to my community. A lot of people are going to think that's cliche and corny, but no. it's the truth. It is the absolute truth. And there's even a story why I'm not a cop today. Uh, but I went into the field of medical device and I worked as a surgical consultant table side sewing into the operating room for 14 years. And it opened my eyes to so many amazing things. I've seen just about every procedure under the sun, dude. I've, I've scrubbed into some of the most fascinating surgeries that you can imagine. And, and some of the most heartbreaking ones. <sighs> Excuse me. Excuse me. All good. And um, I learned a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> I learned a lot. I worked with a lot of brilliant people. And uh, it made me realize that life, health, wellness, <clears throat> it requires, it's a, it's a moving target. It's a team sport. Yeah. And so I want to incorporate what I know about life science what I knew about being an athlete, what I knew about team, and what I knew about functionality, functional ingredients, supplements, dietary supplements, sports nutrition. And so it sent me down the path of what fuels us to get us from, what fuels us to get X to the other side of the equation, right? Like, how do we solve for X? And how do we optimize our bodies? How do we optimize our minds? And so I started digging through, uh, intellectual properties at the University of, South, University of South Florida Research Park. And I came across <coughs> a couple of uh, patents that were issued, but the work was incomplete. It wasn't substantiated. And it really made me start looking into and digging into what is the, what is the mechanism of what's driving this and, and how can I further prove it? And the reason it was unfinished, one of the lead researchers wife passed away and the other one was suffering from cancer. And so I relocated to Tampa and I started digging into these intellectual properties and I secured them. And then I got together with someone who's an incredibly important person to me. Uh, his name is Mike Sperduti. He's my current business partner. Now back to my medical device career, Mike, was a keynote speaker at a national sales conference that I had attended as an employee. And I thought he was just such a dynamic, captivating personality. I, I was a young, ambitious kid in the audience, and I thought, this guy is in a room full of absolute superstars. I'm not counting myself amongst them. I was learning and just becoming something. I didn't know who the hell I was at 26. And everyone was hanging on his every word. In addition to, anytime people pay you to speak, you're doing pretty good. Yeah. And, uh, and so I, I walked away from it thinking, man, I would love to do or be in business with that man one day. What a, what a treat that would be. And so I, I developed my project. And bear in mind, a product had never been made. It didn't have a name. It was nothing but paper. It was just paper. Wow. Nothing had ever materialistically been forged through any of this. It was just concept. And so I dug into it molecularly started figuring out what does what and moreover what doesn't do anything and i reached out to mike Sperduti and i said mr Sperduti, my name is matt nickerson and i've waited about 12 years to make this phone call uh i've got something for you it's incredibly special and i would love for you to be a part of it and he like he's so charming dude he's like sure sure pal I'll take a look at it if i can help you i'll help you if you need to make some calls and make some calls and bear in mind, like, dude, this guy, 
has the CEO of like Siemens, GE, uh, Thermo Fisher, like dude, he, <laughs> all on dude, like he's got access to the biggest companies on planet earth. They all pay him to come in and speak. They pay him to conduct their inside sales. Like Mike is the driver behind some of the biggest businesses on planet earth. And he's taking my call and he's like, sure, I'll help you here. Come on up. I'm speaking in uh, Atlanta. You can be my guest. And I'm like, holy shit, dude, Mike's for duty just invited me. So I needed senior executive management because I'm telling you right now, Michael tell you the same, like he executes everything and I'm the visionary. I'm the dreamer. Every company has got to have that dreamer. And Mike just sees that I get what I want. Uh, not like a spoiled brat kind of thing. Just he, he, he does everything he possibly can to just make things materialize. That's what he's good. He's taking things that are small and he grows them big. And so we got him involved and then we started developing through manufacturers, this product. And I started testing it out. I was testing it, of course, on myself and we're figuring out clinical dosage and where the sweet spot is and what are some of the structure function anecdotal claims and benefits. And I'm telling him, I'm like, buddy, like the, my, my, my cardiac output, my endurance is ridiculous. Like I'm ordinarily topping out my sets at, you know, four of 10 with X workout. And, and now I'm going 30 reps past. And my recovery is half the time and just as short and the density in my muscles, my vascular network, all these things I'm noticing. And, and he's like, look, Mike, Mike is wonderful at this because he's like, sure. Um, he's not calling me a liar, but he's like, uh, trust but verify. Of course, the guy wants this to work. But he's like, look, it's your own product. You can't fall in love with your own product. Like, I need outside. I need outside eyes on this, too. And so. That's what we did. We started gaining outside anecdotal substantiation. And uh, we were at the same time, we're running cellular models and animal models. And no, people, I'm not grabbing a precious puppy and injecting it with Vaso 6. Like, I'm talking cellular levels, okay? We're just yeah. doing cells. And the reason we're doing these cellular studies uh, is on, on animals specifically is because I love animals. My product originally was intended with the origin source of grape seed. Wow. And in my studies, we were looking at how toxic and harmful grape seed extract is to canines. Yeah. And I said, I'm not going to put a product out there that can hurt a dog. It's that simple, wow. uh, especially because the animal industry and animal health is important to me as well. And so I wanted something that was going to be a carrier uh, across all, all these platforms without limitations, which is why we, we chose green tea leaf. And we identified the same catechins. They're all there. And by the way, these catechins are in all kinds of different sources. Man, I've studied, I've studied, I've studied peanut shells. I've studied grape vine. I've studied rhubarb, cocoa bean, like you name it, dude. I, I study things and we break them down to a molecular level and we look at the catechins and we look at the bioactive versus the non-bioactive. We measure them in weight and we see how much of what's in there and the abundance. And so that's just what it comes down to is just isolating, quantifying, qualifying, and uh, seeing what you have in the end and how it works. And so finally, uh, Mike bought in and he's like, yeah, this is good and it's ready. Wow. And we started having conversations with Matt Titlow. I had initiated uh, discussions with a good friend of mine, Tito Sanchez, who was a compound at the time. And we'd never spoke before. And I was just basically saying, hey, I've got this phenomenal product, like didn't have a name yet. Uh, didn't know what to call it, but I said, it's got these tremendous benefits. These are the patents around it. Here's some of the anecdotal evidence around it. Here's some of the preclinical data I've done. And uh, we presented it to them and to Compound, and we rolled it out. And literally, Matt Titlow, CEO of Compound, and I are on the phone, and we're really close to getting this done. And I, if this is where I call in Mike. I'm like, hey, it's deal time. Let's, uh, let's close this up and get it done. And Mike does what he does. Got us, got us into a great deal, a great contract. Um, I'm not with Compound anymore, but I love Compound. I love, I love Matt Titlow. Uh, I love their whole team. Kim Sickinger over there is a superstar. I think the world of Kim, Kelsey, marketing, the whole team. So I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Compound Solutions. And so we do really well there. We have a great time. And then it's now, okay, Matt's, Matt's at a Starbucks drinking coffee, traveling as he does. And I've got a few minutes. And this is where we're just literally going through trademarks, what's available. And I came up with VASO 6. And the reason I wanted the 6 in there is because that's the number I wore in college. 
And so six was my number. I've always, I've always been a bit of a little artist and I like to put subliminal little features in there to just kind of signature it. And so six was that for me. This is six was available. We got it. We liked it. Uh, he created the logo. Uh, good to go with that. And then, and then we launched and then it was go time in September Olympia, September 20, yeah, 2017. And, uh, at the time, man, I just had a, no one knew me and I didn't know anyone else either. And so I'm brand new into this industry and I'm just figuring it out. And so many people, especially now, they're like, oh man, like it, I take screenshots of it sometime because it's so weird to me. They'll say, man, thank you so much for your likes. It's such an honor. I'm like, who the hell am I? I, I, I appreciate what you said and what you post. Like, it, dude, I'm not different than anybody else. I swear to you. And I think that's what a lot of my audience uh, likes about me is I think I'm just relatable, dude. I'm not a white coat. I'm not, I, I don't fancy myself an extreme academic. I learn, I enjoy learning uh, and I enjoy building. And, and I think a lot of people don't quite know what box to put me in because people love to place others in boxes. And, and I'm, dude, I'm seriously just, a, I'm not a scientist. I'm, I'm just the guy next door that's got a pretty insatiable grind and I want to do something special in this world. Like I'm the guy that grew up as a little kid fantasizing about, man, if I was a pro athlete, I'd be the guy that stayed hours after every game signing autographs for kids because I just want to touch lives, dude. And, uh, and I think it's such a blessing. And so I lived in comment sections. I just, I would see somebody post about my new product and I had no chill about me, dude. I was just <laughs> like, I was the happiest guy in the world. I would respond to them. I would re reply to them. And they'd be like, what the hell? You, this is yours? And so they'd look at this dumbass face and this, you know, like, I look like a biker, dude. You know, like the whole tattooed beard thing. And they're like, how the hell does this guy own this thing? And it was just a disconnect in people's minds. And it just, I learned so much from people in this industry, man. They don't understand. I'm not the one that's teaching them. They're teaching me most of the time. And that's why I lived in comment sections. And that's one thing that people just, they don't understand these bigger brands, dude. Uh, and people don't understand how to use Instagram. I'm just going to go off on a little tangent real quick. They don't use it the right way. I've literally researched how to use Instagram. I've watched countless YouTube videos on how to use Instagram, how to best leverage or build or grow an audience. And I've, I've researched specific hashtags and how to get them to trend and, yeah. and how to get them to be visible. And wow. so all these different things have to index, okay? We're talking algorithm. And so yes. most people just approach it casually. And so I'd, I'd comment on a, a new brand of mine and they would send back a generic, thanks for support. And I'm like, if you read my bio, you'd know that I'm talking about my own damn ingredient in your product and I'm here to help you. And I'm, and I'm happy to market it with you or, or whatever. And then you've got those brands that get so big, they just, they refuse to follow people. You know what I mean? Like they ignore their audience, the, the, the things that make them actually special. And I was like, I'll never do that, dude. Like I, I feel sorry for the brands that don't connect with their people because they're missing out on the best part of it. It's cool to have a brand, but dude, connecting with people and seeing directly how you affect their life is where the magic is at for me. That's why I do what I do. I don't care, dude, I'm not going to be cliche, but I, I, I'm telling you, bro, I'm at this point, I'm a very overqualified volunteer. All my money, dude, goes into my company. All of it. I treat it. My, my partner, Mike, and I have a 10 year plan. And right now we're at about, <laughs> you know, since the beginning at about year eight and a half to nine. Wow. So this this hasn't hit its stride and it won't hit its stride truly until we hit about year 10. And so the money I make goes back in here. I live very humbly and and that's not because I try to, I, I didn't grow up with a lot. My, my dude, my parents had me when they were a cook and a waitress, wow. very commendable professions. But I'm, the point is this wasn't easy and it wasn't funded by mommy and daddy. All right. Like this, this was, uh, this was me in pursuit of something greater. And I didn't know how I was going to do it because I had no experience. I had no money, but I had, the desire to be something in this world. And I, I, and I found the way that I wanted to do it. Now I just need to get people to buy in and support it. And that only comes by producing results. And so that's where we're at. Wow. And I mean, again, every word you say is captivating. And I, and I, I think one of the best parts of being on this show is that 
you know, you, you talk about learning from others. I get to learn from my guests and I learned so much from you, you know, just now in, in terms of everything you're talking about and just, you know, I think to give credit to you, Matt, you are such a humble person. You know, I had no clue to be perfectly honest. I, you, the way you were talking to me when we were setting this up was so respectful. And then I check out like, oh my God, this guy has a million followers and he's just talking to me like, and I, I, I love that about you. And that's why I think so many people can connect and relate to you. I mean, Matt, you are a visionary entrepreneur and you differentiate yourself from others in the business by staying true to yourself, you know, leaning into your strength and, you know, following the science where it takes you. And I, I love about, you love that about you. You know, you focus completely on your own goals, no one else's goals. I mean, wow, Matt. Uh, so uh, what you just said there is huge. Let me just tell you, buddy, because the way you lose in life is by playing someone else's game. Uh, I play mine. I play mine my way. In fact, recently I had stated you, you, can't, <laughs> you can't judge somebody's methods without understanding their motives. Yeah. And you just cannot. Like You can't criticize what I do if you don't know why in the hell I'm doing it or what the idea behind what I'm doing is. And people love to make assumptions. And I can't connect with everyone in the world and explain myself to them. But what I would like to do is have people just understand there's two sides to a coin. And you should just give people a little bit of latitude because I guarantee you, dude, my process is not random. There's nothing I do that's random. Even if it looks like it is, it's not. A great dude, I've even sent... I've even sent th mentions. People mention me uh, and they say various things. Dude, I'll send it to my lawyer. Can I repost this? Is this me warranting a claim if I repost this? Am I assuming liability if I repost this? And the answer sometimes is yes. If I put it out there, that means now I've warranted the statement as true and factual and I've endorsed it. And so, dude, it's not a matter of if I like what you said or don't like what you said or I or I ignored your repost, I deal in a very different world because conflicts with me usually come with a lot of, a lot of zeros behind them. Yeah. And so I avoid conflicts. I don't like conflicts. I don't like drama. Dude, the thing I don't like most about being an entrepreneur is people love to pick it, pick at you like all the time. They just, they just find things to pick at. Yeah. And it just, it just is part of it. And I don't know why it's kind of a toxic thing. I wish we could get rid of, but it is what it is. People love to see the rise. They love even more to see the fall. And then for some reason they like seeing the redemption story. So it's, it's, I know that I'm in for the next 20 years of being raised up and broken down today. I'm the, today I'm celebrated tomorrow. It's a hit piece. It is what it is, but man, I, I wish people would understand there's always a method. I don't do anything by, by just random happenstance. I speak with my partner, Mike, about every word we say, everything we do. And then from there, we talk to our lawyers to validate everything we say and do. And that's how you stick around for a long time. And, and by the way, I'll stay, on, I'll stay on this topic. There's a lot of sensational structure function claims, and there's a lot of sensational exaggerations to the point where people are like, dude, that's very vanilla that you only say may support cardiac health. Do you want to know why it's may? Because it may not. You may be the person that is unresponsive to my material. You yeah. might be. I had a guy one time tell me, he's like, your product doesn't do shit, bro. It doesn't even work. And I said, dude, <laughs> and, he, and he's telling me, he's like, I've been taking pre-workouts and high stims and everything else. And I'm like, bro, you're so loaded up on gear. You don't even produce semen naturally, dude. How's my green tea leaf extract going to do anything for you? All right. Like, I have no idea what you have loaded into your body right now. I don't know what else is flowing through your veins, but if you're going to make me the culprit as to why my product doesn't work for you, that's fine. That's why it may support because it may not dude. And, uh, it's, a, it's just a funny little industry dude. And so people think that's very vanilla, but then they fully subscribe into skin splitting pumps that'll make you want to die. Like, they need to find a balance. And that's why I try to bring some of the white coat credibility over here from my previous uh, livelihood, if you will, is if it's not true, you can't say it. And if it's not uh, substantiated, you can't say it is another way. Um, 
And I think that if people would just be a little bit more realistic with their expectations instead of their inflammatory sensationalism of structure function claims, we'd all be a little better off. And I, I guarantee you I'll have, I'll, I'll have an impact on that. I promise you I will because I, my product will continue to grow and we're going to continue to show people the right way. In fact, dude, I'll even make my lawyers available to you on your podcast and you can talk to them all about why we do what we do, how we, we do what we do. I mean, we've got, dude, I've got lawyers that the FDA talk to about structure function claims and protocol and process. Wow. And so we are very buttoned up and that's how you stay safe for a long time. But I'm hoping that other companies take lead uh, relative to that. And they, they throttle back on the sensationalism. And they just stay very realistic about what it is they promise people. I, I agree. And I mean, we are talking with the man behind Vaso 6 cell flow six and an absolute beast now now matt again it has been you know such an honor and privilege talking with you i've learned so much you're truly such an inspiration and you know truly a pioneer in this industry now matt i'd like to get our guests out of here with some rapid fire questions are you okay. game sir i'm sorry say again i said i'd like to get my guests out of here with some rapid fire questions are you game sir i'm game let's go no beard or no tats? Uh, I'm pretty ugly, dude. So I would say no tats. My, my girlfriend's looking and she's like, I'll decide when you shave your beard, not you. So yeah, dude. In fact, yeah, I would definitely go no tats. Keep the beard. I like it. Favorite cheat meal? Favorite cheat meal has to be something with a potato and typically fried. Uh, I love Ooh. potatoes. I'm Irish, dude. There's no, there's no wrong way to make one, in my opinion. Just put it in front of me and that would make me very happy. I love it. Arm wrestle Phil Heath, and I'm really hoping you don't like heights, or skydive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so Phil Heath's arms are ridiculously massive, and the closest I've come to skydiving is zip lining. So I would say I would have a better chance at surviving a skydive than I would beating Phil Heath in an arm wrestling. So let's jump out of a plane. I like that. I like that a lot. I, I don't think many people would have a chance to get, and you're a beast. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but Phil Heath, I mean, he's Phil yeah. Heath, dude. It's okay. Yeah, it's a Phil Heath. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know why I'm asking this question. I, I know the answer to this talk like Rocky for the rest of your life or have to box Rocky Balboa in his prime. Boxing Rocky in his prime would be a blast, dude. And, and honestly, dude, I almost boxed a kangaroo in high school. Like there, there was a state fair event and people like, cause I was known as a brawler and they're like, dude, they might be able to take amateurs in this. And I'm like, look, I've had my, my brain tickle before I've been put down. Uh, so I'm like, okay, if I, if I could have the chance to fight Rocky and even get my ass kicked, I'm going Rocky, dude. Wow. And by the way, if I fight Rocky, I'm going to end up sounding like Rocky, dude. So yeah, I may as well have one. You might as well. And you'd get have a one fat and the other. payday. You'd get a fat payday, Matt. Yeah, now that's right. Final one is a big one. Pull-ups or chin-ups? Oh, my gosh, dude. Wow. Uh, Pull-ups. Pull-ups for me, dude, just... Uh, it's, yes. <laughs> that, that is a tricky question, dude. Why is that such a difficult question? Maybe, it maybe, it, maybe it is, but pull-ups is the right answer because they are harder and they work more muscles. Chin-ups, you get the your biceps. It's of it, dude, yeah. I mean, I like it. That that was that was that was more thought provoking. That was ready for, dude. Nicely done. <laughs> I mean, we are talking with Matt Nickerson, the man behind Vaso Six and Cell Flow Six. Matt, it again has been one of the biggest honors and privileges that I've had on this show in the whole span. It's been now. Before we go, is there anything you want to plug? Where can we find your content? your products, anything. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you kindly, bro. I appreciate that. And thank you for having me on, man. This has been just as much of an honor. I see the panel of guests that you have. Your grind, as far as I can tell, is unmatched, dude. You've got a new guest coming, it seems like, every single day. And being a part of your process and the way that you handle the buildup to actually getting here and being on the show, you're an absolute pro. And I cannot wait to watch you grow. You have my full support, dude, forever. Um, I'm wearing one of my brands. I love Apollon. I love Robert, Dynamic Evolution, HR Labs, Retro Muscle, yeah. uh, Gaspari, uh, yeah. Chaos Crew. Uh, who am I? Uh, Peak Performance Labs out of Canada, dude. I've got so many that I just love. DNA Sports. 
uh, out of the UK is a big one. Gosh, I hope I'm not forgetting anybody, dude. I don't think I have, but we've got some great things happening. We've got some great products coming. You can find me at Cleary Mateo. Cleary is my middle name. Mateo uh -huh. is my first name in Spanish because I'm from New Mexico. And so Cleary Mateo, baby, you know where to find me and you will always get an answer. I hope it's the one you like. I mean, you just mentioned some top quality brands. Shout out to our guys who've been on the show, Robert and Rich. Um, just absolute fucking legends. I mean, They are, you, dude. And it's an honor to be associated with them, man. I love the way they work. The way that these guys work, I get to see the behind the curtain, dude, is a genuine pleasure. I love, as I said, you guys teach me more than I teach you every single day. And and I and I, I so agree. You know, I've been able to be able to talk with Robert and Rich and off air and on air. Just absolute great Top human shelf. beings. Yeah, great human beings. But I mean, I am talking with the CEO, head honcho, and owner of <laughs> Vaso Six and Cellflo Six. I mean, guys, please check out. Matt's content. Please check out everything he has to offer. Such an inspirational guy. A true bearded legend. Tatted bearded legend. Um, again, thank you from the bottom of my heart, Matt. Uh, guys, don't forget to go like, subscribe, and comment. Now, all that talk of potatoes has made me hungry as hell. So Let's I'm about to go cram some food down. But until next time, guys, underdog out.